Hello everyone. In today's presentation, we shall be comprehensively discussing about the metamorphosis of inflation into its various forms of inflation, deflation, stagflation, disinflation and hyperinflation. We shall be going into the causes of all of these and we shall see their differences. So the main points of this presentation are going to be how do you do changes in money supply or credit in the economy? We shall discuss in the most comprehensive way the inflation, how inflation metamorphosis happens into various other forms like inflation, deflation, stagflation, hyperinflation and disinflation. We shall see what are the causes of them or how these various forms happen and the differences between inflation, deflation, disinflation, stagflation and hyperinflation. A detailed presentation on almost all of them are available and the links would be given in the description of this presentation. Now, just to quickly summarize, inflation is actually an increase in the money supply vis-a-vis -vis the increase in goods, services and financial assets in the economy. So, if the increase in money supply is much more than the increase in goods, services and assets in the economy, it indicates inflation. And hence, price rise or price increase is just a subset of inflation, not the entire inflation definition per se. Before we start, we'll have a brief con context of the modern monetary setup where we'll discuss how money is created and, and grow in the economy. Under this system, let's see how money is created in the economy. A person goes to the bank to get some loan. Now the bank takes from the person a collateral which can be an asset, I mean inventory and in lieu of that the bank grants him a loan and voila money is created in the economy because as the name suggests in this system credit is money. Now let's see how this money or credit generated in the system is inflationary at least in the short term. So with this credit the person sets up a factory, has built an infrastructure to in turn build products later on. Also using that money he invests some of that money in real estate because of which the prices of real estate rise. Also he gives out salaries to his employees or to his workers who build the factory, employees who start working in that factory. That means that till now, once he does all this, he sets up the factory, gives salaries to people who build that factory or who starts working in that factory, invests in real estate, all these steps have yet to contribute to the increase in supply of goods and services while the money has already been created and distributed in the system. So there is demand because of that but the supply has yet to come which means there is inflation in the system which goes up. Of course after some time after a lag supply will come which will bring down the inflation and that is why growth and employment, increase in, um, uh, increase in employment opportunities is inflationary in the economy at least in the short term. Now let's see how the money grows in the system. So the person who has taken the loan from the bank invests is in, biz in his business and his business luckily grows. Now the person sees future demand and he approaches the bank for more loan. 
the bank since the business already has grown and the person has a bigger collateral to offer the banks give him a bigger loan and voila more money is created in the economy but now comes the problem in the form of inflation how let's see now the person has taken loan from the bank he this time he also invests in business however this time because of some external circumstances or due to his own wrong decisions the business turns out bad a mal investment or the person wrongly speculates in the real estate market he invests money in the real estate or worse he just spends it on himself in all three scenarios the goods created or goods or services are not created as they should have been in the economy however we do have credit or money supply that has already been created in the economy so the economy has more money supply than goods and services and due to this mismatch inflation happens let's look at the second scenario this time again the person either invests his money in the business which unfortunately doesn't grow he invests the money in real estate which look good for him rises in price this asset price rise in both circumstances he approaches the bank for more loan the bank grants them a bigger loan in both cases this at least in the former case is known as what we call evergreening of loan what happens is with this bigger loan the person gives back pays back to the bank the old loan and the remaining money he uses either let's say for putting up his old business on road investing again more in the real estate market or in the third scenario that, that we just saw investing or put spending the money on himself in all cases again the required goods and services are not produced but more credit is created in the economy leading again to more inflation so let's see how inflation happens due to the increased fiscal deficit of the government now as you may all know that the government has a monopoly over money supply in the modern monetary setup that essentially means the government can print money now how it happens let's say the government spends in more money than it takes in as revenue that means that is essentially first of all the fisc called the fiscal deficit of the government and that would imply that the government issues debt to fund it now when this debt is bought by the central bank of the country is then how printing of money happens because the central bank is what who prints money out of thin air buys its debt and credits this money in the bank accounts of the government and voila money is printed indirectly by the government this in modern context is also known as qe or quantitative easing now essentially since the credit or the money supply in the economy is increased while the, that means this also increases the demand in the economy however the supply in the economy remains the same and that implies since supply has remained the same demand increases that implies basically inflation increases in the economy so now what is deflation deflation is essentially the opposite of inflation so basically in deflation we'll see a decrease in money supply or credit vis-a-vis -vis goods and services produced in the economy now when i say relative increase i mean the good the production of goods and services may most likely also decline in the economy but the decline in money supply will be far more 
then good decline in goods and services production in the economy leading to deflation deflation results when the inflation rate or the price rise goes to zero or below so in deflation the inflation rate goes into the negative territory and hence deflation can cause severe economic recession or even an economic crash let's see why deflation happens as the definition says deflation happens because there is a decrease in money, su money supply a decrease in money supply can occur if in a simple case if a person goes to the bank and he doesn't see much demand for his goods and products in the economy and so whatever loan that the person took from the bank he gives the loan back and voila as easily as the money was created out of thin air by the banks as easily this money is also destroyed if more and more people start doing it deflation can happen in the economy now let's see scenarios in which deflation will happen ironically as a result of malinvestments that caused the inflation in the first place now what happens to credit that was generated by the bank and was causing inflation now so let's say the business of the person has failed and even now the evergreening of loans that was happening for him has stopped the asset market that was growing has collapsed he has no he has no money no longer to invest further and in third case anyways he has wasted money has spent on himself now a bank is asking for their his their loan back but he has no money to return then what happens so here's what happens when he has no money to return the banks would take over the factory or for that matter any asset of that person into their custody and sell it over to a third party so in effect wealth is being transferred from person a to person b during this transfer there will be some credit destroyed in the economy as the market value or the value at which the bank sell over the asset to the third party will not exactly be the market value and so hence some deflationary pressures will be put on the economy with leading to some slowdown let's see the second scenario in this case even the collateral value is insufficient for the banks to recover the loans then what happens enter the investors they will start losing money how wealth because here the bank has to issue more equity or in some cases debt also to raise the money to cover its losses in the balance sheet that means more credit destruction takes place and this can lead to a bigger economic slowdown and now the third scenario in this scenario even the equity value of the bank is not sufficient to cover its losses in this case the federal government has to step in they have to buy equity into the banks and how would they do that well they would use the taxpayers money to do that they would use the tax taxpayers money to buy equity into the banks hence as they are shifting wealth from the taxpayers and buying equity into the bank this will lead to a lower demand in the economy and hence a lower slowdown also since they are using equity since they are using taxpayers money to buy equity into the bank it's very important that punitive actions are taken against people who are responsible for this mess otherwise this phenomenon will repeat itself and why the intervention of federal government is required because otherwise we are in for a fourth scenario which is a bigger mess and that is in this case the depositors or in other words the common people would lose money this would mean the banks have to write off large amounts of loans from their balance sheets causing 
enormous deflationary pressures on the economy and an eventual economic crash. So what is stagflation? Stagflation, in simple words, is a condition of slow economic growth or high unemployment, which is accompanied by a high or rising inflation. Now, why is stagflation unusual in the economy? For that to understand, I would refer you to my presentation on inflation and unemployment. The link would be given in the description. Just to be briefly point out, that usually growth and increase in employment opportunities in the economy involves an increase in credit or money supply in the economy, that is higher inflation. Whereas a falling economic growth or increasing unemployment in the economy involves a decrease in credit or a credit destruction in the economy, that is lower inflation. However, stagflation ironically involves increase in credit or money supply in the economy relative important to note down the word relative relative to growth or employment or in other words supply in the economy so credit and money supply are increasing relative or the credit and money supply are more relative to the supply of goods and services in the economy so that's why st stagflation is unusual in the economy. Let's have a look at a scenario. Here, let's say a very important product in economic activity some, somehow observes a supply decline. That means the prices of that a great input product would rise. A rise in prices would increase the cost of production of the goods in the economy. That would mean to produce the same amount of goods, you need more credit. So the credit requirement actually goes higher. Whereas that would mean that to the same amount of supply, there is a price rise in the economy. Now. Because of the price increase in the economy, in a normal economic course of action, what happens? The demand correspondingly goes down. Now, as the demand goes down, so does the supply of goods in the economy. And when the supply is going down, that means the credit requirement in the economy or the money supply in the economy also correspondingly goes down. In other words, Demand goes down, supply goes down. So when the production is down, the money required to produce the goods are down. It, re it means the unemployment in the economy arises. As you no longer, longer require the same amount of manpower to produce goods. So unemployment rises. And that would mean that in the short term, the price is rising. Inflation is not really rising because there's a difference between inflation and price rise. And again, I would refer to the presentation on inflation, where it, the link is in the description. Inflation is the rise in money supply relative to the goods and services of the economy. Price rise is just one of the consequences of inflation. So overall, inflation does not really rise as in the medium term, at least, the credit or the money supply, as you've seen, is going down. Growth slowdown? Yes, the growth slowdown occurs. Stagflation is not occurring in a normal course of economic action. However, let's take the same scenario. And this time, let's introduce a factor. So here also, like previously, the demand for goods and services comes down because of the increase in prices. However, unlike previously, 
This time around, the central banks intervene in the market and reduce the interest rates. As a result of which, unlike previously again, when the credit or the money supply reduced in the economy, this time because of the, re of, of the reduction in interest rates, the credit or the money supply in the economy either remains the same or more likely increase in the economy. Now this credit or money supply doesn't go into the factories to produce more goods because the demand for those goods and services are lower and hence they don't produce any real employment but they go into sectors other than that. They go as a tool for wealth transfer to the producers of the commodity that has seen a supply shock. So there's a wealth transfer happen from the consumers of that commodity to the producers or they go into the asset markets. Can be financial assets, can be real estate, which bloat in prices. This is where the price increase happens and it filters down into the economy further. So, the supply of real goods and services don't really increase and rather come down as a response of lower demand. Since the supply of real goods and services come down, no longer the same manpower is required as previously and hence the unemployment in the economy goes up. So, in other words, inflation in the economy, yes, it goes up. Why? Because the credit relative to the supply of goods and services in the economy increases. Unlike previously, this time the price increase happens in the medium term, so it's more sticky. If you notice the last time when there was no central bank intervention, the price increase was only short term phenomenon. There is certainly as we see a growth slowdown. So the growth is coming down, employment opportunities are coming down, inflation is increasing and hence we see stagflation in the economy. Let's take a second scenario. Here, the government increases its fiscal deficit by the crowding out phenomenon. Kindly check the presentation on the crowding out for more details, link in the description. Here, the government increases its fiscal deficit, or in other words, increases its expenses over the revenues that it receives by issuing debt. This debt is bought by the domestic private investors in the market. So in other words, little new money is created and out of the same pool of money, the government extracts a greater amount. That means, in other words, crowding out is occurring on the monetary side. What does that translate to? Well, since out of the same pool of money, the government is taking more interest rates rise in the economy, that means that for the private sector, the interest rates are rising and the amount of credit availability for the private sector is coming down. However, the overall credit in the economy is still the same or may even rise a little, but certainly still the same. It's only for the private sector that it has come down as the government is extracting more of its share. That means the investment in the private sector comes down. Or in other words, the supply of goods in the economy comes down, even as the demand increases. And why is the demand increasing? Because the government is spending more. So demand increases. And since the private sector is investing less, the supply either remains the same or most more likely comes down. So have a look at the scenario. 
the overall credit in the economy is either the same or slightly increases. Demand is increasing, but the supply in the economy is most likely coming down due to the lack of private sector investments. And hence, there's price rise in the economy. Inflation is possibly rising in the economy. Growth is certainly coming down because of lack of supply in the economy, new supply in the economy and employment opportunities. And so, stagflation is sucking, hitting the economy. So we have seen two scenarios where stagflation is occurring in the economy. One, where in the wake of a supply shock, the central bank intervenes, and here, the government intervenes by increasing its fiscal deficit. So let's see what is now disinflation. Disinflation is essentially a fall in the inflation rate or basically a slowdown in the inflation rate or rise rise. However, inflation rate is still in the positive territory in case of disinflation. And therein lies the fundamental difference between disinflation and deflation. In disinflation, for example, inflation rate, if inflation rate goes from 4% to 2%, we call it disinflation, while in deflation, inflation rate can go into the negative territory. Disinflation can happen due to maybe the fall in demand in the economy, which can be recessionary and can ultimately lead to defla deflation for sure. Or it can happen due to some productivity improvements in the economy or a positive supply shock which would essentially means that for the same amount of credit or, or a little more credit in the economy, you can have more supply in the economy, leading to disinflation. So let's see how it happens. Using the credit, there used to be some production in the economy that could cater to the prevalent demand. Now, there is some productivity improvement in the economy. Construction of expressways, technological enhancements, introduction of new production methodology can be so many things. So using the same credit or maybe a little more credit, the supply in the economy improves. And that supply can cater, easily cater to the even the increase in demand. This scenario can result in disinflation. So let's see how disinflation happens due to a positive supply shock in the economy. Let's say that there is a supply increase in some of the basic most important commodities or raw materials in the economy. That means the price for these products or these inputs into the production declines. So even as even as the demand for goods are increasing in the economy, almost the same amount of credit or a little more credit increase in the economy can increase the supply of goods and services in the economy since the input prices have declined. And hence, that would, this would imply that inflation of prices in the economy the, or price rise in the economy is much lower, leading to disinflation. What is hyperinflation? Hyperinflation, in short, is a very high and accelerating inflation that is usually accompanied by a rapid and excessive increase in prices of goods, services, and real assets. There is no specific level beyond which inflation is classified as hyperinflation, but roughly a ballpark number of 50% inflation level per month is when hyperinflation is, hyperinflation is considered. Basically, inflation is considered as in the hyperinflation 
territory. Just for reference, US normally aims for inflation levels of around 2% per annum. India, which is a developing country, aims for inflation of around 5% per annum. While in the last hyperinflationary episode of, in Venezuela that happened in 2019, the inflation levels reached to almost 283,000 percent in April 2019. That is hyperinflation. So what causes hyperinflation? Or how does hyperinflation occur? You have to understand this, that hyperinflation is a highly unusual phenomenon. It's not every day we get hyperinflation. And hence the trigger really is not immediate wrong government or central bank fiscal or monetary policies. Well, because otherwise most of the nations, most of the times would be in hyperinflation because these two entities make so many mistakes. So when the government expands its fiscal deficit uh, and prints money via central banks, it will not cause hyperinflation. Sure, it can cause high inflation, but for hyperinflation, it, it may not cause hyperinflation. For that, hype because for that to happen, hyperinflation is almost always caused due to a supply shock or excessive buildup of foreign debt over a period of time, resulting in a currency crisis. Now, why do I say that? Let's look at a scenario. Here, let's say that, a, that, the, cent, that the government of a country increases its fiscal deficit. Now, in order to fund that fiscal deficit, it prints money via the central bank. So the money supply or the credit in the economy increases. That means the demand in the economy will increase. Now to get rid of this demand, let's assume in the first case that the production capacity in the economy is not sufficient. So unfortunately, due to, the, to cater the increased demand, the supply doesn't change, which means more demand, less supply, increased credit in the economy means we, we get higher inflation. There can be a second scenario, of course, in which the supply, the economy is still not at its optimum level. And so in this case, the supply does increase, which means there will not really be a, an increase in inflation. So let's go further in the first scenario where the inflation increases. And also, no, we note one thing here, that the debt that the government takes is in domestic currency, which is important. Let's continue. So to cater to this demand, increase in demand, since domestic supply is insufficient, the imports increase. And that means the foreign exchange or the exchange rate of the country tends to start to decline. And due to this, the inflation increases further. Due to higher inflation, due to this particular higher inflation would in turn mean that demand tends to fall. So think about it. A higher demand meets the roadblock of supply in the domestic market, which led to increase in imports in turn increase in inflation which actually destroys the demand so the circle is complete the demand that led to inflation that very inflation killed the demand of course this cycle can be made worse by wrong monetary policies increasing money supply increased demand further but this you get the idea how natural corrective measures in the economy can alleviate the inflation pressures in the economy. And so, 
inflation comes down fast. Now let's have a look at the scenario where there's a supply shock in the economy. So here, the supply of the economy dramatically declines. And when I say dramatically, it means decline of 30, 40, 50 percent, which has happened. It's not common, but it has happened. And that's why in hyperinflation is not so common. Supply declines dramatically. That means, however, even though supply has declined, the credit or the money supply in the economy is still the same. That means the demand in the economy is still the same. Demand is same, but corresponding supply has declined dramatically. That means there certainly will be inflation and price rise because credit and demand is more than the supply available. And hence, like previously we saw, the imports are going to rise. These rising imports, again, like previously we saw, will lead to exchange fall in the exchange rate for the country. Now, here lies the difference. Unlike previously, here the demand will not fall substantially. Now, wh what is the reason behind this? Remember, in the first case, the demand increased due to government's increase in fiscal deficit. So that was the excess demand. In this case, there is no excess demand. The demand is still the same. Instead, the supply has fallen dramatically. So, for example, there, there is always demand for some goods in the economy. I mean, people do have to eat, right? People do have to wear clothes. People would need some medical, med medical supplies. These are some basic demands which cannot be culled beyond a point in the economy. They will remain. And so, in this particular case, since there, there was no excess demand, but the supply has declined dramatically, unlike previously, the demand remains almost the same and doesn't decline. And that's a very important distinction. And so, to cater to this demand, since the domestic supply cannot come online, the country starts taking in more foreign debt, which increases the country's foreign debt. And due to this, the exchange rate declines even further. A fall in exchange rate forces the interest rates to rise in the market. So, increasing inflation, increasing interest rates, a fall in exchange rate, all these contribute to further supply shock in the economy because the capital, domestic capital has become even more expensive. The, the prices of inputs have become even more expensive and so supply has become, it will eventually get even more less in the economy. So supply reclining even further, demanding demand almost remaining constant would lead to finally a hyperinflationary episode in the economy. Now let's look how excessive foreign debt is what triggers the hyperinflationary episode in the economy. Now here the country's foreign debt increases dramatically in the economy which in turn means basically the country is importing large amount of goods than it's exporting. So that leads to finally a, diff, a waterfall decline in, in its exchange rate. That would mean the prices in the economy would rise. The interest rates, as we saw previously again, would rise. And both all both these things contribute to a sharp fall in the supply. So, like previously we saw, wherein first of all, a supply shock in the economy led to a foreign debt and a currency crisis, finally leading up to hyperinflation. In this case, the foreign debt and currency crisis led to a supply shock in the economy and which finally led to hyperinflation. As again, the demand remains constant because it's space demand. Unlike the, unlike the first case, 
where, where we saw the excessive demand caused by fiscal deficit, again here, it's the base demand, it's not excessive demand. So that remains almost constant, leading to hyperinflation. So points to note, as in the first scenario I told you, the government intervention created excessive demand leading to inflation. So some inflation caused by excessive demand led to the demand destruction, as we saw. In the second scenario, or in the first hyperinflationary scenario, the demand was not excessive, like we saw, because the supply, it's the supply that collapsed by, let's say, around 50%. This caused the inflation to spike up, because the, and the demand was not excessive, but the supply fell. This caused the inflation to spike up. So even the increase in inflation could not really destroy that demand, unlike previously. And as we saw, the crisis worsened due to an company debt crisis. So generally we see that hyperinflationary episodes are accompanied by supply shocks and debt crisis or foreign exchange crisis, as you may call it. Uh, the, and this is because the, yes, since, the, since the supply locally cannot cater to demand, countries start importing goods. And that import of goods piles up the foreign debt and makes exchange rate tumble. In the third scenario, or in the second hyperinflationary scenario, we saw how foreign debt led to a increased buildup in foreign debt coupled with the falling exchange rate caused a hyperinflationary scenario. This again was coupled with the limited productive capacity of the economy. We saw this scenario play out in Venezuela, this hyperinflation in Venezuela 2019. So in conclusion, we saw that inflation is the rise in money supply versus the goods and services in the economy. On the other hand, deflation was the fall in money supply, an absolute fall in money supply versus the goods and services in the economy, taking the inflation into the negative territory, while stagflation was the rise in money supply or more money supply in the economy even as the supply of goods and services in the economy fall. Disinflation was the fall in the rate of inflation which results from a rise in money supply versus goods and services in the economy but at a lower rate. And that is the fundamental difference between disinflation and deflation. A lower inflation rate, while deflation is an inflation rate in the negative territory or an absolute fall in the money supply. And, on, and lastly, hyperinflation is a very high and accelerating inflation that is usually accompanied by a rapid and excessive increase in prices of goods and services as well as real, ass real assets, which usually occurs due to a big supply shock accompanied by a severe sovereign debt and currency crisis or vice versa. So thank you very much for watching this presentation. Do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case you have, you have any questions. Thank you.